are you okay with the Astros offseason, now that you look back at it, another injury? Because going to the start of spring training, you thought, okay, Garcia and McCullers will return in June or July, maybe August for McCullers. Um, and then we got the Verlander news. And then we get the Arcadian news. And then now we await the news on From Rivaldas. Now, Verlander, many people believe that his next start will be in 10 days on April 19th. Um, so hopefully he will return here very, very soon. Jose Arquiti, the timetable is still very up in the air. Luis Garcia was just placed on the 60-day injured list uh, the other day to make a roster move. So you know you have three guys you're really waiting for for a while. And I, Paul, I, I'm okay that the Astros didn't add Blake Snow. Or that they didn't go after Jordan Montgomery. I understand why like they don't want to give a one-year $25 million contract for a guy when you at some point do have reinforcements coming. But I look at the, you know, the Michael Lorenzen deal, uh, a cheaper one-year deal, and with where you're at in the rotation. And I do wish the Astros would have made some kind of move like that. Find a, a cheaper veteran pitcher just to try to kind of carry you. So those guys really come back or just even have in reserve because part of this is I don't want to it's it's hard not to view this with revisionist history because of Ronald Blanco, because he's really wasn't an answer to any of our questions about this rotation when the season started. Now, he has become one now so clearly that he, he is a guy for you until people start getting healthy. But at one point, we never would have believed that. So I do wish the Astros would have, you know, added someone during the offseason that was a little bit cheaper and a little bit older just to have a more confident, you know, move than Blair. But they got the third biggest payroll in baseball. I know. That's the challenge. I mean, they're probably spending above their weight class right now. I think Jim Crane deserves credit for that. The Mets and Yankees have $300 million plus payrolls, and the Astros are third with $249 million. They're ahead of Philadelphia, who's 245. They are almost 20 million ahead of Texas at 232. They're spending a lot. How much more do you need them to spend? Some of the things that they are paying for right now were moves that look horrible mm -hmm. with the benefit of hindsight from Lance McCullers to Jose Abreu to Rafael Montero to Kendall Graveman. Some of it has to do with injuries, but some of them also just deals that you don't like. Ryan Presley's deal is not aging great. The Ryan Presley, uh, not the, the the Josh Hader deal doesn't look like it's going to age that well either. Yeah, yeah. early returns are not positive. So you, you have a lot on the books. You can't just sign everybody. I know everybody wants to sign everybody. And this is me, I suppose, licking the boot and, and, and uh, def shilling for the big corporation here. But how much more do you need? How much more do you want? Yeah, it's normally... <laughs> Because like it's a little bit to me, it's a little bit different than the wide receiver conversation with the Texans, right? Like like you know what you have with the Texans wide receivers. You are all like you you are set. You do not need to add a free agent wide receiver or a wide receiver in the draft. You're good to go. There's zero need to add. The big difference for me, Paul, is just you've already you already had so many injuries that maybe it's maybe this is revisionist history with the way baseball has started with all these starters going down across the league but you know, to not think that you're not going to lose a handful of guys or at least one major piece to your rotation still after what you had already lost or waiting to return that's where i know it's a lot of money on the books but they they felt short staffed still in a way now Spencer, maybe Spencer Arigetti will help solve this problem too. I'm I'm not holding my breath. Not that, holding my breath that, before is Whitley either. Because like that goes back to a Dana Brown thing. Like he's been gassing up Spencer Arigetti all off season. Right. And okay, it's not Joe Espada doing that with Blair Henley before he got executed in front of his family at Globe Life Field. <laughs> but I mean it, it's it's a lot of selling. And look you you can't sign everybody. Mm -hmm. It's it's an it's an annoying thing to go back to. Uh, with with the Texans, there's a salary cap. Yeah. To what you were saying, with baseball, there's less of one, but uh, there is a luxury tax threshold. 
And a lot of these teams have been looking at it and saying, hey, we're not going to spend above it. And you have a lot of arms that are supposed to come back this year that you kind of just have to hold on as long as you can. You, you don't really have much of a choice with where you're at. And I get the people that are pushing for the Astros to have done a little bit more. In middle relief, it definitely would have made a lot more sense to add. Yeah, because that's part of the equation here, right? Is people thought that the the guys returning from your rotation at some point would fix your middle relief problems. So I guess that might be more of what they should have added because that is more of a false hope at this point, it feels like, than just the starters themselves. Because the starters have been very, very good. But now if Fromm are going down, as we await the news on him, and we await for these other guys to return, that that depth that you, in theory, had with Blanco and France, they might not be able to move back into the middle of the rotation like you once hoped, or in the middle of the bullpen like you would once hoped. Probably. Uh, well, I can't say probably, but yeah, it's not. I mean, right now, you don't know. You don't know, and yeah. you, you are, to an extent, putting a lot of this season and the championship chances you're putting it on top of a a wire of hope. God, that's the lamest thing I've ever said. <laughs> but you're putting it on that. You're and and I mean, we'll, we'll see if it holds, but um you are basically hoping these guys get healthy. Yeah. And you and you don't really have a choice other than waiting for that to happen and so I'm I'm not going to crush them for that. I, I I think that they've sort of made their bed with deals that they made in past off seasons, which limited what they could do realistically this off season. Yeah, oh, they're in a tough place. I mean, this is kind of goes back to the baseballs in a tough place, and, and a lot of these injuries. It's I, there's not enough. The amount of starting pitchers that you need in baseball with all these injuries that happen are happening. They well, they don't exist. Like, like there are not just endless starters, you know, coming through farm systems that can come up and give. Reliable innings. The, the oh. Astros have been Blair Henley. Uh, uh, <laughs> no, yeah, well, Sean. I said innings. <laughs> oh, okay? oh, oh, oh. I, I, I didn't say point out. one. That could give you out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, no, and once again, that's also wrong. He gave out. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I'm sorry, uh, Blair. He was again, in a I tough apologize. spot. He was in a tough spot. Uh, yeah, you're right. Like every every team in baseball now apparently just needs like seven or eight starters, <laughs> and that's just there's just not enough. Not enough good ones to go around. Yeah. They literally have seven to eight to nine starters. The Astros? Yeah. It's yeah. Just all hard. It, yeah. It's what? Four of them are unavailable right Verlander, now. Verlander, yeah. Fromber, and then the McCullers, CJ Boys, Urquidy, Garcia. Oh, yeah. Arquidi. They're missing an entire rotation. Would you take that rotation over their healthy rotation? By a, a yeah, lot of miles. I, I know. So <laughs> I, I get you want to add, but like. You have enough. Mm -hmm. I, when healthy, you have enough. You have to hope that the training staff gets it done. I got to say, the training staff for this team leaves a lot to be desired. Yeah. At the very least, when it comes to communication, let alone execution of helping pitchers get back to health. I, I don't think that this would be... I'm not sure if this would even be a question or like a serious question that we're asking if there wasn't that flirtation with Blake Snell. And so that that is what kind of puts the like where you, you bring up a good point with that the fact that the third and payroll, and yeah that's true. And for any you know most times I would be like yeah that's why they're not doing this because the third and payroll they're not gonna pay you know spend big money to get a uh, a decent starter or a starter that you would feel good about. Uh, but that they were rumored to be very interested in Blake Snell, and so and Blake Snell was gonna cost you know there's quibbling over how much he they there's a negotiation there but it was going to start with the two it was mm. gonna, it was going to be it was going to be in the 20 million dollar 25 plus range so there is a little bit of yes there's nothing you really could do but they did think about doing something and they did think about if not even Blake Snell they could have done the Jordan Montgomery or uh uh, who's the other guy? Michael Lorenzen. Michael Lorenzen route. So they kind of made this a controversy for themselves by being interested by being interested in Snell. But ultimately, yeah, like this is kind of like an act of God scenario. They just did something, by the way. Oh no! It's did not they get good. is help on the way? Help is on the way. Here we go. Parker Mashinsky is joining the Astros in Kansas City. 
<laughs> By the way, he has not been optioned long enough to be recalled without putting someone on the injured list. This is from Chandler Rome. In case this is poorly worded, continued Rome. Pitcher's option to the minors must stay down for at least 15 days before being recalled again. There is no time limit, however, if the recalled player is replacing somebody on the injured list. So, Mashinsky can't be the move for Blair Henley. So, it does stand to reason that somebody might be getting placed on the 15-day injured list today. I would assume that if it is going to be anyone, it would it's be from Rivaldo. Yeah, I mean, I heard I heard the Bees talking about this yesterday on our drive home um, from Space Cadet. Kind of the optimistic view of Fromber might kind of be what Garrett Cole is going through with the Yankees, where Garrett Cole is going to be out for six to eight weeks, but not have Tommy John. And, and that could be what we're looking at here in this moment where it's, yeah, you're losing Fromber for a significant chunk of time, but you're not losing him for 12 months. You know, you're not, you're not losing yeah. him until the start of next season. That is yeah. so optimistic. Well, that could be the best case scenario here. Because, like, you the, can't spin this one. It's his elbow. It became sore, not after the performance, but a couple of days later. Okay, what the hell happened? This is a guy who has pitched a lot, yeah. mm-hmm. a lot recently. Only eight pitchers have pitched more than Framber Valdez since since uh, 2020, you know? So uh, he's been durable, but 617 innings since 2020, and all of a sudden the elbow's and, sore. Oh. And, and because of th- like the best-case scenario being six to eight weeks yeah. is a that's a terrible best case scenario uh t- n- two like that's the best you can do me is two months uh two i remember when uh back in oh back in june or july of 2020 the the good old days of you know one start from justin verlander and oh a little bit of elbow soreness he'll you know kind of Sit out a couple weeks. Yeah, it's a shortened season. He only needs to kind of get ramped up for the uh, for the uh, playoffs. And it's oh, like Dana Brown right now. He needs he needs Tommy John actually. Whoops, sorry. He doesn't pitch for two years. Well, yes, <laughs> like, Lance McCullers. Like, He'll be back. He'll even, be back. Even Good July. Point. Even the Garrett Cole, like the, the best case scenario being what Garrett Cole's going through. I would say that Garrett Cole's not out of the Tommy John Woods yet. No, no. <laughs> like, There's a lot of people that don't think he's going to pitch this year. Never so. mind. Never mind. He never pitches this year. He might come back in two weeks and his or in two months, and his elbow still hurts. Right <laughs> after or, he, you know, has to pitch ninety times in a game, or it just snaps. And I, I think that's the tricky thing, and why all these pitchers are complaining about it. Garrett Cole actually spoke up about it. Uh, so did Shohei Otani. <laughs> that's interesting. He's speaking up about anything other than him, his own issues. But they're suggesting, hey, the the um, pitch clock. It, can't be helping. I, I would like to see some actual science as opposed to baseball saying it's not a problem. Baseball saying it's not a problem makes me think, okay, mm-hmm. well, it might be a problem, but the pitchers all saying it is the problem. I don't know. I'm sort of more along the lines of Tyler Glasnow, who is saying maybe they need to have better grip when they're throwing the ball. Um, it's a very convenient excuse to say, oh, the pitch clock, oh, it's inconveniencing us with pitchers being the head cases that they are. It's also Tommy John has been up for like 10 years before the pitch clock. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Uh, Everyone seems to be a ticking time bomb on this Astros roster, though. It, when Orkiti comes back, I mean, that doesn't mean he's back. That doesn't mean he's out of the woods. Uh, Lance McCullers, it's happened before. Luis Garcia, it just happened. <laughs> like, I, I, I suppose this is where you could get into the conversation to where we were at the very beginning, where, okay, you should add somebody else in. But again, you, you got so much invested in the payroll. You're, just, you're basically, I mean, for lack of a better term, you're, you're sort of like that, or comparison, you're like that frigate that hit the the bridge in Baltimore yeah. and that like you you're hoping that it doesn't hit the bridge but there's a good chance it's going to hit the bridge like you're the pilot you're you're F yeah. you're just we, stuck we can try to turn this thing but <laughs> i don't know yeah <laughs> uh let's add to the list here uh non astros news uh washington nationals young prize starter Josiah Gray 15 day injured list with a forearm flexor strain uh oh. Typically precursor to elbow issues. <laughs> Baseball's got a problem. Um, There's the lasagna guy. But I think they're a right? decade away from figuring it what out. What was it? I so. or whatever. Too. He's he. I, I read an Eliza article guy. yesterday, and it was like, oh wait, there's more guys than the guys that we mentioned with Spencer Strider and there's so I, many. I will say, and like obviously this is like a crazy like rate. It is 
oftentimes early in the season is when guys get these elbow injuries too. It's because it's because that's when they kind of have to hit the gas mm-hmm. on <laughs> on their elbows for the first time, and some sometimes it just snaps. I mean, how many how many innings are these guys like like the ramp up period right in spring training? Yeah, like. It's different than it used to be. And, and the fact that these guys, like the workload of Fromber that you mentioned, I mean, a lot of these guys get, get you know, I don't want to say baby DeLong, but like they their <laughs> workload is very carefully managed. And guess what? Their UCL still snaps. Like there just doesn't, that you go, you play it super safe and your uh, Perez from the uh, Marlins who was like getting sent back and forth through AAA to limit his uh, innings pitch, or your Framber Valdez and Garrett Cole, who have been rock solid pillars of health for the last five years, and you have to sit for two months with elbow soreness. Like, there's no right answer here. It's odd. It, to me, it seems obvious. It's like the way that they're teaching pitching now is not sustainable. I think that's very clearly the answer. Is like. It, Focusing so much on velocity and spinning the ball. I remember when I was, I want to say like eight years old, we were in Disney World. This is a random story, but we ran into a major league pitcher. Remember Steve Trout a really long time ago? This is during my super nerdy, knew everybody from Almanacs borderline on the spectrum phase of my life where I wasn't allowed to watch movies or TV. So I just knew everybody. And I remember we talked and he said, do not throw a curveball before you are 15. I, I and, and, and then I remember though, going up like as a kid, terrible baseball player, but going up against kids who were actually throwing stuff at a very young age, like 11, 12. And it does seem like we have made young kids who are pitching throw Things that they probably shouldn't be throwing mm-hmm. until they're a little bit more developed is is that related to this? I it, I truly ha- do not know. And it and you're making them pitch it year round too. Yeah, there's no off season for youth baseball. Yeah, I thought the uh, that's true too. I thought yeah. Jeff pa- when Jeff Passam was on um, part of my take, I thought it was interesting just to hear him talk about his kid, how his son is like a good baseball player, and that there's these websites and these like apps that are like teaching these kids. How to get like extra torque and spin? Oh, I'm sure TikTok, especially. And it's all over. It it's, I mean, you see college kids throw. I mean, we saw Paul Skeens, who's the number one pick. Didn't he pitch like 130 pitches in the College World Series last year? Mm-hmm. I mean, they they are reckless with kids with their arms. It's all connected. It is it is all, all there, and it is just it. That's why it's not an easy fix. It's going to take a decade to unfix this because if it's I, if it starts if you have you have to think that some of it starts. I say let him use the sticky stuff again. I hope that like maybe that'll help. I mean, like they're talking about getting rid of the pitch clock here. Like Fred says, pitch clock ends after this season on the Twitch. I I don't think it goes away. I think they extend it. I bet that they go back because the, the the change that they made this year was that when a runner's on base, it's now eighteen seconds as mm-hmm. opposed to twenty seconds. I think they're going to go to like. And those two seconds is what costs yeah, Framber Valdez his UCL. See, yeah. that's that's <laughs> where the, the people that just don't want the pitch clock rule, you're going to use this as an argument to put yeah. get rid of the pitch AKA clock. AKA the altogether. biggest dinosaurs on earth. Yeah, and and I mean the games were faster last year. It was a, and this year too a rousing success. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, it listen, it I, literally everyone started liking Rob Manfred again. <laughs> the, the games were becoming four and a half hours. This, when it's one of 162, uh, f off. If it was the playoffs, I don't mind that, but it's it's totally different when it's the when it's the pl- uh, regular season. No, the the pitch clock was good for baseball. 